good day, so it's off. You want to take a break? I labor in vain to build it. Now help us in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We are here in God's presence and as his people so that Michael and Joanne may be united in Christian marriage. Marriage is a state of life we believe God himself has provided for his children. Jesus our Lord blessed us by his presence at the marriage in Cana in Galilee. And we know as Christians that when we gather in his name, he is here among us to bless us by his presence. Throughout the scriptures, marriage is an odd relationship. And in the New Testament, the bond of marriage is seen as a sign of the loyalty and the love that exists between Christ and his people. It is therefore not... 
be entered upon lightly or unadvisedly, but reverently and with serious consideration for the purpose for which it was given. It was given for the sake of the lifelong companionship, help and comfort which husband and wife ought to have for each other. It was given so that the family life may continue and that children may be brought up in the love and security of a stable and happy home. It was given for the health of our human society, for which the honouring of the marriage bond provides a firm foundation. It is into this deep and continuing relationship that, with each other that Joanne and Michael now desire to enter. If anyone can show any just reason why this marriage may not be lawfully joined together in marriage, I do now ask you to declare it. And I require and charge you both, knowing that you are answerable to God, that if either of you know any reason why your marriage would not be lawful, you declare it now. Since no one has spoken, let us ask the blessing of God on the marriage that is now to be made. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of us all, we turn to you, the giver of all good gifts, and we humbly thank you for all the blessings of our life. Especially at this time, we thank you for love, for the love and concern of parents, for all who have taught and guided and cared for us through the years, and for the love and the trust which Joanne and Michael are drawn together in marriage. We thank you too that you have given us marriage in order to guard, to strengthen, to make perfect the same gift of love. Since we believe that it is only with your help that we can do anything well, we ask you now for Michael and for Joanne the gift of your Holy Spirit so that in sincerity and in truth they may make and keep their vows to one another. We ask this for Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Michael, will you take Joanne and be your wife? Will you pledge your trust to her in love and honour, duty and service, faith and tenderness, to live with her and to cherish her in the bond of marriage? Joanne, will you take Mark to be your husband? Will you pledge your trust to him in love and honour, in duty and in service, in faith and tenderness, to live with him and to cherish him in the bond of who gives this woman to be married to the other? <laughs> we will take each other now by the right hand. Will you, Michael, say after me? I, Michael. I, Michael. Take you, Joanne. Take you, Joanne. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise and covenant. I promise and covenant. Be a loving, faithful, and beautiful husband. To be a loving, faithful, and beautiful husband. To you, so long as we both shall live. To you, so long as we both shall live. And you make the same vow. I, Joanne. I, Joanne. Take you, Michael. To be my husband. I promise and covenant. To be a loving, faithful, and beautiful wife. To you, as long as we both shall live. that these rings may be to your service a token of their solemn vows, the pledge of pure and abiding love to Jesus Christ our Lord. As a visible sign of the covenant relationship into which you have now entered, these rings are given and received. symbol of all that we have promised. As a symbol of all that we have promised. And all that we share. And all that we share. I'll give you this ring in God's name. As a 
symbol of all that we have promised. And all that we saw. By these signs you'll take each other to have and to hold from this day forth, for better for worse, for richer for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish and to death separate. As much as you've come together in marriage, declare it before God and this congregation. I declare you to be husband and wife in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord pour out the riches of his grace upon you, that you may please him and live together in his, in his life until your life end. Amen. Those whom God has joined together, let not man separate. Hear the word of God as we find it in Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians and we're reading in chapter 13. A portion of scripture which people are quite familiar with. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or baseful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For our knowledge is imperfect and our prophecy is imperfect. But when the perfect comes, the imperfect will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall understand fully, even as I have been fully understood. So faith, hope, love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Amen. And may God bless to us that reading of his word. I guess one of the most overworked words in the 20th century is that word love. And today we've used the word love quite a lot within the context of the marriage service. And as I said, I guess love is one of those words which we've overworked within our 20th century because we use it to cover anything. For example, uh, we'd say, I love Rolls Royce cars, or I'd love an ice cream, or I love chocolate cake, or I love strawberries. And yet we could turn around and say, I love my wife. And we know that those two things don't mean the same thing. We don't love a Rolls Royce, or we shouldn't love a Rolls Royce, the same as we'd love our wife. Nor should we love a chocolate cake, the same as we love our husband and wife. So there is a difference in meaning and in expression. And Paul, in his letter to Corinthians, writes about love as the supreme gift that any person can give to another person. Michael and Joanne, I trust that in your marriage that this gift, this gift of love, will be the gift that you give to each other hour by hour and day by day. That your love will go st grow stronger and more abiding as the time goes. And that you will find, as Paul says, that love does cover a multitude of sins. And Paul there says that love is that quality which goes the second mile, which extends to the other, the uh, benefit of the doubt. It's not thinking of itself, it's not conceited, it's not rude, it's not angry. Love is that quality which endures and abides. It's that quality which adds and never subtracts from a relationship. It's that quality which takes off the abrasiveness of words and of action. And so may Michael and Joanne in their marriage find that their love for each other grows richer and deeper and stronger as the days go by. And may we in one another in all our relationships, husband and wife, friend and friend, may we extend that quality of love which adds and never subtracts. Unto his name be praise and glory 
now and forevermore. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we offer up our common prayers to you for Joanne and Michael, who are now bound together in the covenant of marriage, so that you, so that with your love in their hearts, your joy may be theirs and their joy complete. May it be your love that it is the true foundation of their home, that it may be firmly rooted and grounded in love. May it be your love that is the true light of their home, that everyone who enters it may see something of your love in it. May it be your love that is their treasure and wealth in life, that their happiness may not depend upon outward circumstances. So may their home be a sanctuary of your love, making them a blessing to their neighbours, their friends, their family, and to the generations that follow. When all goes well with them and their cup of happiness overflows, shield them lest they be tempted to take their blessings for granted. When they face problems and difficulties of life, guide them by your spirit that they might find their way through. When they come to suffering and sorrow, may they be drawn closer together and nearer to you. And so through the green pastures and through the dark valleys alike, may their journey in life be a journey that is led as each, each step by the Good Shepherd, to whom alone as your people we give praise and glory. What we have asked for, these your children, Father, we ask for each family that is represented here today, that those who pledged their love to each other long ago may find their love to deepen today, that those who took their vows to each other long ago may renew those vows today, so that new love may radiate from each life, creating new joy and new strength. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. Be joyful in the love of God, the blessing of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, may it be upon you this day and always. Amen. Let us now sign the register. <laughs>
asked me to kiss the bride. Oh, pretty rough. <laughs> Got this on okay. film? Where are you, Mac? Thank you. Anybody got a smile? Eh? What's the Ninja Turtle? Yeah. Who wants one? Did you want Everybody? Did you want a smile? Yeah. You're right. Quick, here's Jacqueline. Where's your hat, Jacqueline? Come and have your photo. Rachel. Rachel. Rebecca. Rebecca, rather. I'll get it right. Up here, please. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Did you come over here with the other girls so we can get a lovely photo? Oh, look. Huh? Hayley, guess what I got? Hayley. Who wants a lolly? Me. Who? Who wants a lolly? Me. Hands down, but what do you say? <laughs> Who wants one? Me. Oh, nearly did it. Quick, quick. Me too. Hello. Who likes ice cream? Anybody? Yep. Who likes ice cream? <laughs> Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Can we get to you with the boys as well? All the kids, all the girls and boys again. Yeah. Excuse me, Robbie. Quick, Here. Where's Max? John. John? Okay. Tell me who likes ice cream and when do you want it? Right, I put your arms down. <laughs> Hayley. Thank you. Beauty. <laughs> One more. Good. Thank you very much. Got to get that. <laughs> yeah. Bacon, a bacon, that's, that's bacon. all the time. Oh, did we want all the girls? Well, yeah, all the girls, all the girls, they told me. All right, so we've got it. Thanks, Jess. Um, there's Kayleigh. Yeah. Oh, it's Rebecca. Oh, it's Laura. Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca. You're the boys too, what? Do we have to move out in the front? Where's all the boys? Get one with the boys. You mind the baby? You might get out in the front. Is there six girls there? I know, sweetie. We're nearly finished. Oh, that's it? Oh, that's all ready. Is there six? Yes. Come back here, Jacqueline. Only could I like you. Don't pull up. Turn around, girls. Turn around, girls. Turn around, girls. Turn around, girls. In front of